Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode of Oithel, where we explore objects in the history of language. Today, we're heading east to explore the oracle bones, the oldest known form of writing in China. Oracle bones are the only form of writing that survives out of ancient China. They offer an interesting insight into early Chinese rituals and culture, as well as the development of their writing and their language. Essentially, what happened in the oracle bone ritual was one would take a big flat bone, like an ox scapula, or the bottom of a female tortoise shell. It's got to be a female because males have convex shells on the bottom. Today I learned. And they'd carve into this bone a question. Something like, should I go to war? Or, should we sow our crops now or later? Things like that. Once you have your message, you take a hot iron and you put it in a little pit that you dig on the bone until it cracks. And then when the, it, after it cracks, you read the cracks to determine the answer to the question. You may think that's kind of barbaric and maybe even a little bit witchy, but remember, over a million magic eight balls are sold every year. Most of these bones have been found around the site of the ancient capital of the Shang Dynasty, which is near modern day Anyang in China. Dating the bones exactly is kind of tricky, since even though they have dates on them, the ancient Chinese dating system isn't well understood. However, some of the bones mention lunar eclipses, and using those as clues, we can make a guesstimation that the bones were being made about the 1200 to 1100 BC. This practice continued for over two centuries, before the Shang Dynasty fell to the Zhu Dynasty, where some oracle bones were made, but not as many, and they were kind of scattered around, whereas in the Shang Dynasty, they were concentrated in one place, mostly. Just like with the Rosetta Stone, many years passed before the meaning of these cryptic bones was realized. These bones were lumped in with fossils, and they were all called dragon bones, which were used for medicine, and were ground up to make medicine to, you know, you'd grind up the bones and put it in your cut to make it heal, like that type of stuff. And before you call that b barbaric, remember that in Europe and America during the 1800s, mummies were being ground up to make brown paint. Until we ran out of unprotected mummies to use and had to stop. We literally ground up what we knew was dead people from before Jesus existed to make just the perfect shade of brown. And some people would eat the mummy dust. Why? I don't know. Just to be able to say that they did. Isn't that... Uh, <clears throat> are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay. So I think we can forgive the Chinese peasants for grinding up bones that have magic symbols on them to cure malaria. Anyway, it wasn't until 1899 when a Chinese scholar named Wang Yirong noticed that there was a similarity between the symbols on the oracle bones and the Zhu Dynasty bronze inscriptions, which until that exact moment were the oldest Chinese writings, just to be toppled by the oracle bones. The sad story about Yang Yi Rong was he discovered this in 1899, but in 1900 he committed suicide because he was in part of the Boxer Rebellions, which was trying to keep Europe out of China. So that's just a shame that that happened. I wonder how much further along our understanding of the Oracle Bones could have been. But I digress. Let's move on to the linguistic impact of the Oracle Bones. Not only do these bones tell us about ancient Chinese culture, they tell us about how Chinese writing formed itself. You see, Chinese writing is the widest used logographic writing system, meaning a writing system that's picture words. In the oracle bones, obviously, we're also logographic. So looking at these older symbols can help explain why certain Chinese characters look the way they do. There's almost no other way to learn the etymology of Chinese words other than looking at the symbols that led to these words. 
Now, I'll show you some examples because it's not easy to just explain and understand. Here's the modern Chinese word for dog. It's kind of abstract, right? Like, what? how is this supposed to look like a dog? Well, look at the oracle bone script word for dog. There we can see it's a dog. It's facing the wrong way, but you can clearly tell that this is the shape of its head, and then somehow this shape of its head became simplified to simply one little brush stroke next to a kind of a stick figure. Let's look at another one, the Chinese word for eye. That doesn't look like an eye, that looks like a three-story building. But now look at the oracle bone word for eye. Oh, that's just an eye. And you can see how that might be simplified to just three boxes on top of each other because the oracle bone symbol for an eye was just like kind of three, it made three chambers when you drew an eye. Now what's sad about the 4,000 individual oracle bone characters is that scholars estimate that they could probably decipher about 1,500 to 2,000 of them at best without much else to compare this script to. And no, we don't know what the spoken language sounded like and we don't know anybody who knows them obviously because they're all dead. A lot of its message is trapped in the past. However, they represent three and a half millennia of writing that led to most of the writing systems of East Asia and the, writing, the written language of nearly two billion people. Thank you for watching Ling King. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day. Bye-bye.